I want to talk about the basics of verbal communication. Because if, you, if you're an independent thinker, as I'm sure you are, you maybe can figure out how to make things better for yourself simply by knowing more clearly how things work. Um, we're going to do a unit called focus, which is, which is how to organize information to be heard and how to organize information that can be understood and retained. For those of you in any kind of management or supervisory position, you are giving information to people which is in turn going to be passed on. And so the clarity of that information becomes extremely important. So I've been doing research over the past, I guess, 15 years on memory, how people's sensory and short-term memory functions, and how people actually remember things. If you're managing change, for example, you need to be very, very careful that your messages are super clear. Because if I'm not sure if you've given me some bad news, Sarah, or what I think is bad news, and it's not entirely clear to me, I will interpret it based on my worst fears. And then I'll tell everybody else that that's what you said, right? <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge. So this is a unit that, that I think, I hope you'll enjoy. And to that end, I'm going to ask you to reflect on issues or topics that you are currently dealing with and that you would like to be able to speak eloquently about, that you would like to be able to make short statements. So we'll actually do some stuff today that you can use tomorrow or next week or in the near future. I'm often surprised by the number of people who are kind of struck dumb when I ask them a simple question about their work or, or, or who go through the process of rewriting what their job is or what, how they feel about something uh, or their product or their service or whatever. So my notion is that it's very useful to have your own personal database or library about key issues. So for example, you teach security? Um, uh, anti-fraud. Anti-fraud, anti-fraud. So there's probably a whole, you have, probably have a whole vocabulary around anti-fraud. I've no doubt that you've found ways to, to make it simple for people who don't know anything about anti-fraud. But if you were going to be interviewed on television or if somebody said, well, just tell me about anti-fraud, it's useful to have, if you don't already, it's useful to have short, eloquent statements that summarize things. So this is based on the limitations of people's short-term memory and how we can cause people to rehearse or replay or have strong images connected to it so it transforms to longer-term memory. So the working memory is a bit like RAM and long-term memory is a bit like your hard drive. So you're putting things, you're putting things into people's short-term memory, and then you help them to process it so it goes to longer-term memory. That's the idea. Works quite well, actually. What problems do you have when it comes to answering questions, unexpected questions? What happens to you under pressure when you have to answer an unexpected question? Your heart beats faster. Aha. That's, that's the, the basic anxiety thing, yeah. What about the content, Anna? Well, I, sometimes the best answer comes later. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, uh, you, you think about something, but then uh, afterwards, oh, I should have said that. Uh -huh. Aha. So you're not sure if all the important points have been made. Right. Or you don't know if you're finished. Or if you missed something out. See, the, the pressure usually comes not from you not knowing what to say. You've got lots of things you could say. It's the pressure to choose what to say and how much to say and how to begin it and how to end it. I want to show you a method that will enable you, before you speak, to know how you're going to start and how you're going to finish and what you're going to say in between and, and that will make it memorable for you. After about 10 years at CBC working with the on-air people, they caught me by surprise. They asked me to coach the top 30 executives at CBC. And I thought, this could be the end of my career, right? Uh, because they're the people who are hiring the people I'm coaching. 
And so six at a time, we spent two days together. And when we came to this unit, Focus, I said, I don't think I even need to do this because, and, and in fact, I'm slightly embarrassed because you guys run one of the biggest broadcasting organizations on the planet and you choose the reporters and the writers and you critique all of the stuff. Anyway, they loved it. Long story short, they absolutely loved it. They were executives just like you, you know, executives, managers, supervisors. They're under pressure and they have to show up at meetings and sound good. So they really liked it. In fact, Stuart Cox, the executive producer of Dragon's Den, went to a conference in Belgium of international television executives. And on the last day, the speaker failed to show up, so they asked the Canadian guy if he would talk. And he went up there with one sheet of paper and talked for about an hour and 20 minutes, and people said it was the best presentation of the whole conference. And he, and he contacted me when he came back. He said, I just used the focus method. So, we're all just fine as long as we have a simple structure, as long as we have a map, because we know and, and we know and we follow a simple rule about how we're going to start and how we're going to finish. And it's it, extraordinarily effective.